Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome to the Elite Realtor Experience Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we're going to be a little bit different. Whether you're watching or listening, we're going to be having a conversation with Ashley Nagy from North & Co. in Scottsdale, Arizona, as she tells us what she's doing in the midst of all this chaos to be successful still in her real estate business. Uh, all right, we're here with Ashley Nagy, not Nagy. Nagy, not Nagy, it's Although Nagy. Some would potentially say that would fit well. Uh, yeah, that's, I might be a little Nagy, but no, it's Nagy. <laughs> so Ashley runs a successful business in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, tell us, tell us like the 60 second rundown of what you do. So short version is, um, I'm a real estate agent here in Arizona, been going on my fourth year, um, kind of got my start back during the crash 2008. Um, and I have really focused my business on, um, got of course, community properties here in Arizona. It's a big deal out here. Um, we get a lot of visitors coming all over the world. Uh, I would say half of my buyers right now are um, wanting to purchase their second home, retirement home out here in Arizona. So short version, in a nutshell, live in Scottsdale, um, work in Scottsdale, sell in Scottsdale. So that math doesn't add up in some people's brains. Fourth year, but you got started in 2008. Explain that. So, so yes. Sorry. Okay. So 2008, <laughs> I got my start. So I'm we not that smart, AM. but that doesn't, that doesn't compute in my brain. Here the two. Here the two. Yeah, I'm not good with math. <laughs> if it's not in like threes and six percents, like I'm not good with math. <laughs> um, no, so 2008 got my start. Um, and I worked with for a, um, uh, drawing a blank, um, real estate company that um, they were all investors and that's how I got my start there. So flash forward to now, I got licensed in 2016 here in Arizona. So when I worked for the real estate um, investors, it was like back in Denver 2008 time. So gotcha. 12 okay. years total. 12 years total. So Scottsdale is what predominantly like a second home market or, or you work with people who this is like their vacation home golf course type yeah. thing. Is that right? Yeah. So golf course communities, majority of the golf courses here, they're like 60% vacant during the summer months. Right. Um, so yeah, it gets up to 120 degrees here. It gets a little hot. Uh, most people don't like that. So I have from like South Dakota, um, Kansas, like Oregon all over, um, but they want to escape those winter months. So they come here when it's gorgeous out. So let's not be shy. You represent some professional athletes and some big business owners and some big names. Yes. Do I do have yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty nifty. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, I just think that's the name game with really right, like creating um, connections and adding value to people's lives. And it just so happens that it just kind of the natural progression of things have just worked out in that way. So here's what I want to do. Um, you've built a successful business during a very, very good time in real estate, right? And mm -hmm. right now is not quite so much a good time. So right. w one of the things that I want to do with successful agents is hear what you're doing in the midst of all of this chaos. Yeah. Like everybody's hearing from me, okay, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. But what are you actually doing? What are people actually doing? Um, so you have a successful business. You, you mm -hmm. are doing very well. What are you doing now? Like what is happening in your business? What are you focusing on? Is anything happening? Yeah. Besides eating bonbons and watching Netflix all day. Absolutely. Um, of no, course. I'm kidding. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, I think, um, I'm, I'm sure that you've said it too. So just like piggybacking off of like the people that, um, are speaking into those to your agents and that sort of thing. Um, it, it probably is going to sound no different. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm not taking this time to sit and binge Netflix shows. I will say I watched the Tiger King documentary and oh my gosh. I couldn't get into but. it. I don't I, like, I, it's insane. I got maybe 30 minutes in the first episode. And I was like, I just don't understand this. This is just, you I'm, have, you have to like just the thought that there's like people out there like that. And then you're like, 
holy cannoli. Like this is ridiculous. Holy it's crazy. Ganoli. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I also like, I'm a mom, I have two kids, so they're not in school right now. Um, and that's always been like a challenge for me, right? Like showings, you know, people want to see houses on like nights and weekends. So it's like childcare, trying to do all of that stuff. Um, but right now they're home with me, which is great. Like, I love the, having that time with my kids, but it's also like, they're arguing, I'm trying to homeschool, I'm trying to do my business as well. So my time, mine might look, look a little different um, for other people. But for me, I try to wake up like, like I do every single morning, like I try to keep my constant like routine. Um, real estate agents, you don't work Monday through Friday, like everybody knows, like you work weekends and stuff. I typically work seven days a week, I try to take at least like a few hours during a day for like me. Um, but yeah, I try to just stay really consistent, like waking up. I normally wake up like right around 5 a.m. ish. Um, I know I'm kind of a freak, but I do that just because the second I wake up, I'm constantly giving to other people. So I found that if I wake up and give that time for myself and just take time for me, I'm a night, a lot nicer mom, like great to my clients. Like, so I just have to take that time for myself first and be selfish in that. Um, so anyways, yeah, first things first, take a shower, get ready, get ready for the day, uh, make breakfast, do all of those things. And then I have um, just a set of lists that I want to do. Like during this time, it's so, so, so important to just stay top of mind in front of your clients. And you can do that in thousands of different ways. For me personally, I make sure that I call five people a day. I email five people a day. I text five people a day and I social media five people a day. If I have time, I will handwrite cards five people a day, like minimum. That's just the minimum. So five, 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 five. Exactly. Yeah. That's just an easy number that I can remember just like, okay, I just did my five. And it's not, not to sound that that's like insincere because I don't want that to come across that way. Um, like I built my business, like all of my clients are like close personal friends of mine now because mm -hmm. I've, I've just connected with them on a deeper level and I don't really work with people I don't want to work with. So I've gotten to a place where I can, I can be choosy with the people that I work with. And if people are going to be rude or, you know, like, um, really short kind of thing, like I just don't want to work with them and I'll pass them off and just get a referral. Um, so yeah, I think that's really important. And I think, However, you can add value. Like now is not the time, right, to be calling people and saying, "Hey, do you know anybody that wants to buy and sell?" And like pressuring people. And we had um, we have had like lots of Zoom meetings, like with brokerages, and I hear agents all over there saying, "Like I can't convince anybody to buy and sell." And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Like your job right now is not to convince people to buy and right. sell. Like your job is to just be there for people. Right. Like I went, I was talking to some of my clients. Like some of them are elderly. Like they they're not going to go to the grocery store. So I went and like got a care package together. I dropped off toilet paper. I dropped off white claws. Like I dropped off wine, like whatever my clients, like I'm hearing there that they need, I will go and do why stall it down, like wipe it down, drop it. Like I know I've been isolating myself. So just staying top of mind. And I think in the midst of all of this chaos, if you can do that, like if you can stay top of mind for those people and you're like, and then they'll remember you six months, 12 months down the line, like she was there for me. Like she took the time out of her day to really make sure that like, I feel valued and I feel appreciated and they'll come back to you. And when all of this is kind of like working its way through, nobody has a crystal ball on like what the timeline for that is, but you'll stay top of mind and then your business will thrive and referrals will come and those types of things. So, mm -hmm. um, another way, like making sure that you know about like the stimulus package and being that like resource for your clients, like hey, do you know who to call if you can't make your mortgage payments? Like, do you know the options that are out there available? Like the, the buyouts and the government are doing right now. Like there's a lot of different programs that are offering. Um, so just staying top of mind, being very, very knowledgeable. Um, I've been listening to podcasts nonstop. I've been listening to a lot of your podcasts. Um, listening to a lot of like audio books, like while I'm cooking, while I'm doing things. Um, I don't really believe in multitasking. I don't think that's a real thing, but trying to like at least instead of just listening to music or tv all day like stimulating my mind in another mm -hmm. way and getting away from like the bubble guppies in the background of my kids watching tv kind of thing like <laughs> trying guppies. to get something else yeah. in my brain yeah. oh yeah my daughter's a big bubble guppy. So. <laughs> great the bubble guppy phase in our uh -oh. house. <laughs> yeah my son's past that he's all like minecraft and like fortnite and stuff so. right overwatch Overwatch, yeah, he does like Overwatch. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> so it's a great game. So you're you're focusing on top of mind awareness, 
-hmm. you're still reaching out to people. I like that five, 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 five. Is that, was that five fives? 25. So yeah, five, five, five. It's almost like you did it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> How guarantee. many is that? <laughs> uh, I like, I like that you said you're pushing back against people in your brokerage or people you're listening to that are you're hearing them say, "I can't convince anybody to do anything yeah. right now." I mean, to me, that shady business anyway. You should never attempt to convince somebody of something that they don't want to do. That's what makes you. That's what makes people think that we're sleazy anyway. So I like that. Yeah. Okay, so we're staying on schedule, trying to stay on schedule, trying to stay on routine, um, waking up early, focusing on yourself, filling yourself up so that you can then pour into other people during the day. Mm -hmm. That's good. What are you saying to people when you're texting them, DMing them, emailing them, calling them, writing notes? What are you saying to people right now? Literally, it's just checking in on them. Hey, like, how's it going? Like, what are you experiencing? Um, what, what can I do for you? Like, do you need something? And, and just having a conversation, just being human, just interacting with them naturally and not even mentioning real estate. Like now is not the time. Like they know I sell real estate. Mm -hmm. They're good. Um, like I'll do my little snippets on Instagram. That's like, Hey, I'm still like, I, this is just to remind people, like I'm still in real estate, obviously, right. but I'm not shoving it down their throats. Like right now it's not that time. So are you showing any right yeah. now? Do you still have people yeah. looking? I am. Yeah. Yeah. I have a few buyers that, um, that need to get out. And then I have, um, one buyer that doesn't necessarily need to, but is still wanting to look at houses. So just taking the precautions, um, in Arizona, we're essential business. So we're allowed to like be out and about and doing all of that stuff. Um, so trying to just stay as safe as possible. Um, mm -hmm. my daughter has an autoimmune disease, as you know, so she's very, like, I have to be very cautious about everything I do. So I strap on my gloves and I get my Lysol and my everything and yeah, just trying to take as many precautions as possible. Right. Okay. So you're, you're wearing gloves, you're taking, are you wearing masks? Are you literally yeah. Lysoling the home as you go through? No, I'm, I'm like, I wear my gloves and I lock the door. I don't touch my phone. Like I try not to just keep everything in there. Um, but yeah, wear gloves and anything I touch, I just try to just take off, throw away and right. What a weird time to be alive. It is so weird. It I is. mean, my gosh, this is, I was talking to my yeah. mom earlier and we've talked about this. Like it, it just, it feels like you're in a movie right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, yeah. it's so weird, but things yeah. are still happening, right? Yeah. Yeah. And things are still moving. Things are still selling. Um, still yeah, alive and well. So you're waking up, you're sticking to the schedule as best as you can. Mm -hmm. as, as now also a part-time homeschool teacher, yep. you, uh, are Spanish your, too. Uh, sp <laughs> ugh, ugh, man, yeah. blessings on you. Um, I cannot even imagine trying to teach in English right now, uh, okay. much less a secondary language as well. So you're doing your five fives. What yeah. else are you doing? Let's actually, let's be specific. You mentioned social media. What are you doing on social media? Because you, you were named what? Number, number two, number two in Scottsdale, social media, realtor. Um, yeah. And I, so if you look at my social, like it's, it doesn't really spell out a lot about real estate. Like I don't go and say like, this is the house I'm showing. This is the house I just sold. This is like, I don't, I don't do that. Um, and I actually like have kind of had this like inner, dilemma right now. I like, I should be posting more. I should not be. Um, but most of the stuff is just going to be like my day to day. Like I make jokes about realtors. Like I make fun of myself a lot. Um, because there's funny things that happen. Like you see funny things. Like I remember, yeah. like, I think I put on my Instagram story, like I had a, a doll collection in one of my seller's house. I'm like, you might want to like box that <laughs> up and put that in storage or something like <laughs> things like that. Like, it's funny. That's the stuff that I feel like people want to see rather than Here's another house I sold. I don't know. Just yeah. Personally. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So what is, is there like X number of stories you're trying to put up a day or is just as things pop up? Just as things that pop up. Yeah. Um, I try to share other, um, other businesses, local businesses. Like if okay. somebody needs like a shout out, like I'm, I'm reaching out to, like, I know a lot of the local business owners here, so I'll share their stuff um, and vice versa. You know, I feel like everybody kind of has to look out for each other right now. 
Um, and another thing, like I'm reaching out to realtors in other markets. Like I know you and I have talked a lot. Um, I've talked to other agents in like Oregon, like all over the country. I've really made a big business off of um, referrals. So I'm reaching out to those agents like, hey, what's going on over there? Like, what is it any different that I'm doing here? I know I've got a lot of tidbits from you and other agents like that I can implement here in Arizona. I can share with my brokerage. Um, I think real estate has really got a bad name by like doing like being really successful and then keeping those secrets for yourself where I don't think mm -hmm. that's I don't think you should be doing that. Like yeah. share it. Like there's so much opportunity to go around. And the second you kind of like hoard onto those things, your clients will pick up that you're just wanting you're greedy or grimy or kind of you know. for sure so you're you're not doing any sort of like prospecting with the purpose of trying to find a ready willing able buyer seller right now it's just more of mm -hmm. like hey how's it going how can i help what do you need yeah, yeah. is is I that a strategic tactical or is that just also sort of like look, I don't really want to be showing right now myself. So I'm just going to kind of set up for when we get past this. Um, I, I made a little bit of both. I don't know. Um, right now I just think that like I, I get a lot of leads that come through, um, social media. So I, I follow up with those people. I follow up with my clients and really, like I said, I just kind of let them steer the conversation. Like okay. I call them like, Hey, how's it going? Like I asked them about their spouse, like I asked them about their kids, like, what do you, like, what fun activities are you doing? Like, do you need, do you need a coloring book or do you need something? Like I'm more than willing to like go drop off something at their house and just, just trying to like listen and just being that like compassionate person for them. I think that's really what people need in the world of uncertainty. There's so much going on that you don't know. Like I'm just trying to focus on the things that I can control and like, that's what I'm good at. And like, that's what I can control right now. So just being a friend, just listening to them and helping them. You'll, you'll understand this. I don't, I don't know why every time somebody talks about controlling what you can control. I always think on frozen two when, <laughs> um, uh, Oh my gosh, what's the snowman's name? Um, Olaf. Olaf. Why can't I never remember that? After, after yeah. the wind pushes them all out of the town, in the beginning of the movie and Olaf's playing with the kids and they're just sticking stuff on his face. And he says, we call this controlling what you can control or something yeah. like that. I, I can't remember. Anyway, yeah. Anytime I, so I brings that up as a, as a parent, I figured you would appreciate that oh, reference. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we're not necessarily prospecting for new business. It's just literally being a good human being and a resource for people, seeing if they need something, seeing how you can help and which creates top of mind awareness, which yeah. then in turn on the back end of this helps you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there's agents out here that are still doing open houses. <laughs> um, teach their own. I mean, it's, it, it is what it is. Um, I take comfort knowing that I'm like, okay, we're all in this together. Like <laughs> we're all going to go through some sort of financial hardship. Like I just know it's coming. And whether you prepared for it or not. And I think um, for me, like I have a little bit of an advantage. Like I got my start during the crash. Like I got started um, doing short sales, foreclosures, and I didn't know if it would come back. I didn't, you know, you, you hear all of these different things and the real estate market goes like this and that, but I, I kind of just took mental notes of like the agents that were like, oh, I should have done, or I could have done. And I wish I would have like during the crash. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's smart to know. Like for, if this ever does happen again, like this is the stuff that we could be doing. Um, and obviously it's a lot different now than it is back then. And I'm not saying that we're in some sort of like crash financial crisis. Like, I don't know, but right now I'm, like I said, I'm controlling what I can control. I'm taking this time to learn. I'm taking this time to just like bond with my clients and prospects, like on a deeper level, like we're all human. We're all in this together. Like, what do you need? And, and then vice versa. Like they'll ask me too, like, what do you need for me? And I'm like, no, 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 nothing. Like I'm here to offer something to you, but I feel like it's just human interaction, like, you know, the naturalness of it, they're going to reciprocate that or they're going to want to be there for you as well. So, yeah. So I, I, I don't like to, this, com, this question can come across as fatalistic and I'm not trying to be fatalistic, but you, you built a thriving business in the midst of a thriving market, a thriving market. economy, right? Mm -hmm. So would you say right now you're in hunker down survive mode? From, from a just a pure real estate standpoint, like clearly you're going out and you're helping 
and you're being part of your community and you're making sure that your people are okay and well taken care of. But from a financial, economic, real estate standpoint, are you kind of hunkering down and just surviving? What's kind of your mindset when it comes to that? I'm, I mean, I'm not there yet. Like I, like, you know, got a lot of savings and that sort of thing. However, um, preparing for something like that, that could happen. Um, I always think it's smart not to think or be a, be a negative person. Like you're, you know, like you were saying, you're not trying to be, but like just having the mindset that like, Hey, this is a potential of it could happen. So going in and, um, like looking at my bank statements and looking at like all my reoccurring charges and being like, oh, okay, I can get rid of this. I can get rid of this. Like, I don't really need that. And just trimming some of your costs and overhead. Um, like I, I, I have a transaction coordinator and an assistant. Um, I told my assistant, I'm like, I'm sorry right now I can do everything. Mm -hmm. And while that sucks, like just being a smart business owner too, you have to just, you have to cut costs wherever you can. Like I know I trimmed out a lot of my marketing right now. Um, I just really, it's it, now is the time to open up everything and be like, what do I really need? And that's true in life and business and everything. Like, what do I really need? What do I don't like? What was I taking for granted? Like, what am I, you know, in, and just reevaluating everything within your life right now, I think it's just so, so important. Um, I was talking to the owner of my, my broker, my brokerage right here. Um, and he was saying, you can go into your like Apple ID login and like find out all of the subscriptions that you have on there. He's like, I had like hundreds of 199 subscriptions every month. He's right. like, I just got rid of those. I'm like, that's so smart. I need to go and do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just trimming out as much as possible and kind of just preparing for it. The best you can. Right. Yeah, that's smart. Um, I, I have a lot of questions and, and people asking me, you know, is it, do, do we keep pushing business? Do we keep trying to, to find ready, willing, enable buyers or sellers? Do we like, what, what do we do in this time? Do we just try to be safe? And from a health standpoint, I mean, I know you have a, like you said, you have a daughter with an autoimmune disease. So there's that risk factor as well. Um, if you could put a, a percentage on like, and, and I know this is kind of a, a strange question, but if you can put a percentage on, okay, X percent of my time, I'm trying to find people who still want to buy or sell before we got here. And then now that we're here, what percentage of your day is, is attempting to, to go find a ready, willing, able buyer or seller? Yeah. I mean, for me, naturally I'm a, pipeline building fanatic. I can sit down and make a friend with anybody I talk to. Um, I, that, that just comes natural to me. It doesn't come natural to everybody. So for me, I would say 80% of my life was just building business, getting, generating leads, bringing people in my pipeline. Um, you know, the potential of this person could know somebody or five people that knows somebody like that, that was always my mindset, right? Like I'm always thinking every person I come in contact with, I'm like, Oh, I bet you, they know a hundred people that want to buy or sell right now. Like mm -hmm. right now, that's not my mindset right now. I'm not even thinking of that. I'm not thinking when are they going to buy? I'm not putting them in the zero to three month category, the three to six months category. I'm not doing any of that stuff right now. Mm -hmm. I'm literally only just calling my sphere of influence. I'm just talking to people and I'm, I'm not even asking them. I'm not even bringing up real estate. I'm letting them spearhead that conversation. Um, and, I, and I think it all kind of goes hand in hand. Like we don't really know a lot about the disease like or the, the virus. Like we don't know a lot about it yet. And there's so mm -hmm. many different um, articles and new, you know, like the news is like always coming out with different things like we know so much more now than we did last week. And we're going to know so much more next month about everything. And um, we don't know how long we're going to be in quarantine and, uh, you know, shelter in place and all those things that we don't know. Um, so right now it's like, I can't be like, Hey, so you're going to want to buy, like, what are you thinking? Like, you know, what, what's the plan? Um, I had this first time home buyer. He's actually a really good friend of mine that he wanted to go look at houses and his lease isn't up until October. And I'm like, just wait. Bro. Like, bro, I like as much as I would love the commission check, but I'm like for you and your situation and what's going on in the world. And he was looking at a new build and I'm like, you don't know what's going to happen during that build time. Like, is the builder going to be financially stable 
for an economic downturn? Like, you have no idea. Are they going to be able to get goods? I don't know. Like, they could pro, you know, prolong the build for two years. Like, that's what we saw back in 2008. Like, we just saw so many new home buyer or home builders, like, just going bankrupt and, like, closing up shops. So I'm like, I'm trying to, like, tell him that. He's getting all excited, like, being a first-time home buyer. I'm like, I get it. But just wait, like, wait at least two months. Like, just give us two months. Like, we're going to know so much more about it then than we you know than we know now so there's no point to break your lease now and do all of those things so just being real honest and as much as you need that check like just having the best interest of your client at heart yeah well i mean i think it's i think it's easy to see very quickly why you were so successful um pretty quickly i mean in four years that's a baby still quote unquote in real estate but successful very quickly because of what you're saying right now, you're actually telling your client to wait. I mean, there's some people who are sitting back thinking probably you're crazy for doing that, sure. but at the same time, you're really not because you're doing what's best for your people. Uh, and that's good. So your mindset is so many people right now, I think, are, okay, what do I, what do I do for me? What do I do for me, for me, 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 me. Uh, but that mindset has never suited people well in real estate for the long term. I mean, maybe yeah. you can be a flash in the pan and make uh, a decent amount of money very quickly. But if your goal is to build a long-term business where you're yeah. referral based, uh, I, I think your mindset's probably a little bit better. What, what is a, a piece of advice that you would give agents across the country right now that are kind of in this panic mode, fear mode, everybody's a little bit scared and anxious. Yeah. What's one thing you would tell them? Um, to turn off the TV to you know what's going on. Um, this analogy was so perfect. I heard this on a call the other day and it was when you're told to like seek shelter when there's a hurricane or a tornado, like you go inside. You don't try to like stop the storm. You don't try to like prevent it from happening. You go, you let the storm pass. You kind of mentally prepare everything you can do while you're, you know, at home. Um, and then when it's over, you go outside and you're like, okay, there's opportunity here. There's opportunity here. Right now, the thing you can do is Make sure your CRM and your database and your sphere is organized and it's like up to part. Like everything that you've been putting off, <laughs> do. Read the book that you've been putting off. Um, listen to the podcast you've been putting off. Like go walk outside barefoot with your feet in the grass. Like look up at the sky. It's not falling. Like just take that time and just breathe and relax. And we're all in this together. And there's so much information out there right now. Do not listen to something and then react to it right away. Listen to it, process it, take it in, and then challenge those thoughts. Like challenge everything that you're thinking of and try to play devil's advocate with everything. Even if you agree with something, be like, I'm going to try to find something that I could argue with this. Or I don't know. I just think the more information that you can like consume yourself with while that's great, it can overwhelm people and it can make you like to give them so much anxiety about the unknowns. The thing is you don't know there's so many uncertainties out there. Like just take this time to pause, to breathe, to react and feel like what's important to you in life. Oh, that's deep. Yeah. That that's good for everyone. So let the blonde hair fool you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ashley, thank you. Congratulations on your success so far. Thanks for having me. Um, I think there's a lot of really, really good bits of wisdom and nuggets here for a lot of people. So thank you for all of that. Uh, we, we wish you and your little ones safety through all this. Where can people find you on social? Um, so Instagram, um, AZ Realtor Ashley, and I'm on Facebook. Um, and I joined TikTok, which I don't know what the hey. heck I'm doing. I think quarantine is getting to me. Um, don't look <laughs> me up on there. That's really embarrassing. But <laughs> uh, well, 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 just in case, if they're looking on TikTok, how can they find you? I don't even want to say. Um. <laughs> we'll link it up. Don't worry about it, folks. I'll find it. We'll link it up on there. <laughs> Ashley, anyway, thank, thank you, you for having me. so much. Uh, best wishes and uh, thanks for the wisdom. And I'm, I'm sure you and I will keep connecting, keep talking. Absolutely. Thank you.